The iPhone 12 Pro, the most powerful iPhone yet, the sexiest iPhone yet, but is it the best iPhone yet? Let's discuss. What's up YouTube, it's your boy. BMAC. And if this is your first time here to this channel, welcome. Thanks for stopping by. Make sure you smash that subscribe button with all notifications turned on so that you never miss another video on this channel. And if you've been here before or if you're already subscribed, welcome back. So today we are indeed reviewing the iPhone 12 Pro. Pro. Not Pro. Pro. The iPhone 12 Pro. This is a top tier phone, so how does it hold up? Well, Let's find out. Let's get this iPhone 12 Pro review started. First things first, let's start things out by talking about the iPhone 12 Pro design. What the iPhone 12 Pro actually looks like. The iPhone 12 Pro, as you can clearly see, brings back those beautiful square edges. I have honestly missed those square edges ever since the iPhone 5S, or technically the iPhone SE first generation, if you wanna consider that. And if you guys follow me on Twitter, you, you know by now that I've been asking for years for the return of those square edges. And oh, we finally have them, and they are amazing. The square edges on the iPhone 12 Pro are literally all that I hoped they would be. Speaking of those edges on the iPhone 12 Pro, you can clearly see we do have a stainless steel edge design. Edges that glisten and shine in the light in one of the most luxurious and most premium looking ways possible on a smartphone. Complete, of course, with your frosted glass back and that shiny, minimalistic Apple logo. And last but not least, of course, that rear-facing camera bump that causes you to have an uneven phone when you put it flat on a surface. I'm sorry, that still bothers me. But it is funny to me how a simple change of going back to square edges could make this phone feel like a new design and also just so premium in the hand. With those square edges, I have found the iPhone 12 Pro to be easier to hold, easier to pull off one-handed gestures, and overall, just easier to love. Now we have what feels like a premium, solid, piece of glass. So I could go on and on. Clearly, the square edges, I'm a huge fan of them. But you are also getting a ceramic shield on the front display of your iPhone 12 Pro. Apple is saying this is the strongest glass ever used in their iPhones. They're actually saying that the ceramic shield could provide four times more drop protection. And you are once again getting an IP68 dust and water resistance rating, allowing the iPhone 12 Pro to be fully submerged in up to four meters of water for up to 30 minutes. That's always a good thing. So apart from that, even though we clearly have a new design here, you are also seeing a lot of the same. You still have your physical buttons in the same places. You still have your notch. You still have that camera bump and you still have that lightning port. Now design wise, obviously one of the number one things I like to see change on the iPhone is either the shortening or overall removal of that notch. That would be awesome, but even more important than that, and now more than ever, I would have loved to see Touch ID incorporated into the iPhone 12 Pro. Yes, Face ID, when we're able to use it normally, it's awesome, but being able to have Touch ID specifically perhaps on that right power button would be immensely helpful. And we saw this in the latest release of the iPad Air, so it would have been awesome to have that right there on the power button. It just, it would make so much sense, so perfectly placed. And then last, but certainly not least, colors. You got four different colors to choose from. You could pick either graphite, silver, gold, or Pacific blue. All of them looking pretty darn sexy and pretty darn premium, in my opinion. But all that having been said, design-wise, Best design on an iPhone thus far. Where things change a little bit and where one of my biggest disappointments with the iPhone 12 Pro lies, however, is actually with the display and how the iPhone's looking when you're actually using it. The iPhone 12 Pro does indeed have a slightly larger display than the 11 Pro, coming in at 6.1 inches. And it is still a Super Retina XDR OLED display that looks darn good. High dynamic range, P3 wide color gamut, and it's pretty darn bright. It actually could max out at 1200 nits of brightness, perfect for my needs in pretty much any occasion. But where things fall behind, and where I've gotten a lot of flack on Twitter for complaining about it so much, is with the refresh rate. Only a 60 hertz refresh rate in the iPhone 12 Pro. You do still have 120 hertz touch response rate, but the screen itself, 60 hertz. No 90, no 120, no 144, still just 60. I promise I'm not gonna turn this video into a why is there no 120 hertz refresh rate on the iPhone 12 Pro rant video. Not gonna do that. But I do think it's kind of crazy how we still do have a 60 hertz refresh rate and the Pro iPhones 
this day and age when so many other smartphones are incorporating 90, 120, 144, with no problem. A higher refresh rate in a smartphone definitely makes the smartphone feel more pro, more snappy, more responsive, more powerful. And it's a real bummer to only have a 60 hertz refresh rate on the iPhone 12 Pro. Does that mean the display is bad? Does that make this unusable? No, not by a long shot. But higher refresh rates do make a difference and it is something I would have liked to have seen in the new iPhone 12 Pro. Having said all that, even though in that case you kind of are overpaying for the display you're getting in the iPhone 12 Pro, it still looks good. In fact, it still looks great. OLED, bright, HDR, it's gonna work. It still looks super pretty. But you know what else looks super pretty? The photos that the iPhone 12 Pro is capable of because of the camera that the iPhone 12 Pro actually comes equipped with. You are of course getting front facing and rear facing cameras. The selfie camera on your iPhone 12 Pro actually being a 12 megapixel f 2.2 wide lens capable of all your favorite Apple image processes, including smart HDR3, portrait mode, deep fusion, and of course, night mode. So if you're a selfie taker, which I don't consider myself to be, you're gonna love the selfie camera on the iPhone 12 Pro. You can't really go wrong. The cameras I care more about personally are those rear facing cameras and you're getting three of them on the iPhone 12 Pro. Inside the rear camera bump, you are getting a 12 megapixel f 2.4 ultra wide lens, a 12 megapixel f 1.6 wide lens, featuring a 47% larger sensor and a 12 megapixel f 2.0 tele lens, complete with optical image stabilization on the wide and tele lens. Now I do wanna take a moment here to say that there are actually some differences between the iPhone 12 Pro camera system and the iPhone 12 Pro Max camera system. Basically, here's the deal. As it relates to the tele lens, you're getting a slightly longer tele lens on the iPhone 12 Pro Max, giving a little bit more zoom range. But the tele lens actually is a little bit faster on the iPhone 12 Pro, coming in at f2.0 instead of f2.2 on the iPhone 12 Pro Max. You're also getting sensor shift optical image stabilization on the wide lens on the iPhone 12 Pro Max, while you're only getting regular optical image stabilization on the wide lens on the iPhone 12 Pro. Just throwing that out there so you're aware of it because there is a difference this year. And then of course you can see the last little sensor there that was added to the iPhone 12 Pro this year is the LiDAR sensor. I'm still yet to fully appreciate the LiDAR sensor. I know it works wonders for augmented reality. If it could help out with actually making the portrait mode of the iPhone better, I'm all for it. But so far, it doesn't seem to be that crazy of a game changer, at least not from what I've experienced so far. Nice to have it, still in development, so hopefully we see the LiDAR scanner being more and more utilized in the future. So with all that having been said and all those different lenses, it really should go without saying, of course you're gonna get beautiful photos on the iPhone 12 Pro. Apple has really gone above and beyond with their image processing. The photos that their phones take are absolutely incredible, sometimes providing a better result than what I could pull off with my DSLR or a mirrorless camera. And now with Pro Raw coming out, something you should definitely look into if you consider yourself a photographer, Apple is literally bridging the gap between their image processing and raw photo taking. The photos you're gonna get on the iPhone 12 Pro are the best they've ever been and capable of HDR video recording and Dolby Vision up to 60 frames per second with a top resolution and frame rate of 4K 60 frames per second. And the front facing lens even being capable of HDR and video recording up to 60 frames per second and also being capable of 4K 60 frames per second. So not only is the iPhone 12 Pro camera system great for photos, it's phenomenal for video as well. Dolby Vision video. Mind blowing. But of course, all this is possible because of what's going on on the inside of your iPhone 12 Pro, things that you might not see, but are getting the job done. In the iPhone 12 Pro, we are getting the A14 Bionic chip the chip that Apple is calling the fastest chip in a smartphone. And that chip is exactly what you would expect it to be. Powerful, fast, efficient. I can edit photos on the fly. I can edit videos on the fly. We're talking 4K 60 frame per second video or HDR video all on the fly on a device that fits into your pocket. And of course, we can't forget the fact that the iPhone 12 Pro is also 5G capable now. So get ready for those blazing fast 5G internet speeds once the 5G network in your area is activated. I literally have zero complaints when it comes to the performance of the iPhone 12 Pro thus far. It just, it works and it works phenomenally well. The fact that you're also getting six gigs of RAM packed into this baby is definitely helping out with everything as well. So A14 Bionic chip and six gigs or RAM. But of course you can't forget about the storage options. Three different storage options to choose from with the 12 Pro. You get 128 gigs, 256 gigs, or 512 gigs. You can pick the storage option that works best for you. I always max out my storage, especially when you have 4K HDR video recording. But even with 128 gigs, it's an understandable start. But all this is only as good as the battery. 
and how long the iPhone 12 Pro is actually gonna last for. The iPhone 12 Pro houses a 2,815 milliamp hour battery, and we're seeing battery performance on par, or maybe even just slightly less than that of what we're getting in the iPhone 11 Pro. Meaning, as Apple promises, about 17 hours of battery life if you're just watching video. Completely dependent on your phone brightness and your internet connection, of course. If you have that brightness jacked all the way up and you're on 5G, you're gonna have a far lesser amount of time with the battery than that. But something new that we mentioned earlier is that MagSafe compatibility that you're getting now. Basically, the best way to describe MagSafe on the iPhone 12 Pro is that it's gonna make wireless charging faster and easier. There's a magnet system in the iPhone 12 Pro that's gonna connect the wireless charger directly to the iPhone 12 Pro, making that super quick and easy. And MagSafe charging is actually capable of up to 15 watts of charging, as opposed to just 7.5 watts of wireless charging you get with a Qi wireless charger. And and for me alone, anytime I could wirelessly charge my phone and wirelessly charge my phone faster, I'm all for that. So MagSafe, pretty cool addition to the iPhone 12 Pro. And by the way, you do get fast charging. Apple says you could actually go from a zero to a 50% charge in just 30 minutes using a 20 watt wall adapter that's gonna be sold separately. You don't get any wall adapter with your iPhone 12 Pro purchase. So gotta get that separately. But a zero to 50% charge in 30 minutes if you do use a 20 watt or higher wattage adapter. One of the most Apple things I've ever seen Apple do. But with all that having been said, here are my final thoughts on the iPhone 12 Pro. I will go on the record and say, if it wasn't for the superior battery life and the arguably better camera system on the iPhone 12 Pro Max, I'd use the iPhone 12 Pro as my daily driver. The iPhone 12 Pro Max is huge, really big, like borderline clunky big, and that just makes the iPhone 12 Pro just such a more seamless, usable experience with this more portable form factor. But one of the most important things on any smartphone for me is going to be the camera system, so even if it's just marginally better on the iPhone 12 Pro Max, call me crazy, but that's enough for me to wanna use that instead. But back to the iPhone 12 Pro here, I literally do think this is the perfect size iPhone. It feels good in your hand, especially with those square edges. You could reach pretty much anything you need to reach on the display with just one hand. So I'm kind of bummed. I like the iPhone 12 Pro, but I need that bigger battery. I need that better camera system. But if you care about size, portability, the ability to put this in your pocket and take it out easily, and if you don't care about marginally better photos or a slightly bigger battery, the iPhone 12 Pro definitely the best iPhone ever made. Perhaps a little overpriced compared to the other smartphones on the market with similar or better features, but the experience you get on an iPhone and the experience you get with iOS in particular, probably gonna make this thing worth it. It just looks and feels so good. I mean, come on. <sighs> drooling over a phone. If you guys are interested in finding out more about the iPhone 12 Pro, of course you guys could always head to my affiliate link, bmac.link slash iPhone 12 Pro, bmac.link slash iPhone 12 Pro, or as always, there will be a clickable link in the video description box below as well, so check that out. And with that having been said, I think I'm gonna go start upping my selfie game. I gotta, I gotta improve my selfie game. I will see you guys in my next video. Is there a beauty filter on, or do I just look that good? That was the most ridiculous thing I think I've ever said.